Choir. A choir is a musical ensemble of singers. Choral music, in turn, is the music written specifically for such an ensemble to perform. Choirs may perform music from the classical music repertoire, which spans from the medieval era to the present, or popular music repertoire. Most choirs are led by a conductor, who leads the performances with arm and face gestures. A body of singers who perform together as a group is called a choir or chorus. The former term is very often applied to groups affiliated with a church and the second to groups that perform in theaters or concert halls, but this distinction is far from rigid. Choirs may sing without instrumental accompaniment, with the accompaniment of a piano or a pipe organ, with a small ensemble, or with a full orchestra of 70 to 100 musicians. The term choir has the secondary definition of a subset of an ensemble. Thus one speaks of the woodwind choir of an orchestra, or different choirs off voices or instruments in a polychoral composition. In typical 18th to 21st century oratorios and masses, chorus or choir is usually understood to imply more than one singer per part, in contrast to the quartet of soloists also featured in these works. Choirs are often led by a conductor or choir master. Most often choirs consist of four sections intended to sing in four-part harmony but there is no limit to the number of possible parts as long as there is a singer available to sing the part. Thomas Tallis wrote a 40-part motet entitled Speminalium, for eight choirs of five parts each. Christoph Penderecki's Stabat Mater is for three choirs of 16 voices each, a total of 48 parts. Other than four, the most common number of parts are three, five, six, and eight. Choirs can sing with or without instrumental accompaniment. Singing without accompaniment is called a cappella singing. Accompanying instruments vary widely, from only one instrument to a full orchestra of 70 to 100 musicians, for rehearsals a piano or organ accompaniment is often used, even if a different instrumentation is planned for performance, or if the choir is rehearsing unaccompanied music. Many choirs perform in one or many locations such as a church, opera house, or school hall. In some cases choirs join up to become one mass choir that performs for a special concert. In this case they provide a series of songs or musical works to celebrate and provide entertainment to others. Conducting is the art of directing a musical performance, such as a choral concert, by way of visible gestures with the hands, arms, face and head. The primary duties of the conductor or choir master are to unify performers, set the tempo, execute clear preparations and beats, and to listen critically and shape the sound of the ensemble. The conductor or choral director typically stands on a raised platform and he or she may or may not use a baton. Using a baton gives the conductor's gestures greater visibility, but many choral conductors prefer conducting with their hands for greater expressiveness, particularly when working with a smaller ensemble. In the 2010s, most conductors do not play an instrument when conducting, although in earlier periods of classical music history, leading an ensemble while playing an instrument was common. In Baroque music from the 1600s to the 1750s, conductors performing in the 2010s may lead an ensemble while playing a harpsichord or the violin. Conducting while playing a piano may also be done with musical theater pit orchestras. Communication is typically nonverbal during a performance. However, in rehearsals, the conductor will often give verbal instructions to the ensemble, since they generally also serve as an artistic director who crafts the ensemble's interpretation of the music. Conductors act as guides to the choirs they conduct. They choose the works to be performed and study their scores, to which they may make certain adjustments, work out their interpretation, and relay their vision to the singers. Choral conductors may also have to conduct instrumental ensembles such as orchestras if the choir is singing a piece for choir and orchestra. They may also attend to organizational matters, such as scheduling rehearsals, planning a concert season, hearing auditions, and promoting their ensemble in the media. Eastern Orthodox churches, some American Protestant groups, and traditional synagogues do not use instruments. In churches of the Western Rite the accompanying instrument is usually the organ, although in colonial America, the Moravian church used groups of strings and winds. Many churches which use a contemporary worship format use a small amplified band to accompany the singing, and Roman Catholic churches may use, at their discretion, additional orchestral accompaniment. In addition to leading of singing in which the participates, such as hymns and service music, some church choirs sing full liturgies, including propers. Chief among these are the Anglican and Roman Catholic churches, far more common however is the performance of anthems or motets at designated times in the service. 
Poets' choirs are also categorized by the institutions in which they operate. Some choirs are categorized by the type of music they perform, such as In the United States, middle schools and high schools often offer choir as a class or activity for students. Some choirs participate in competitions. One kind of choir popular in high schools is show choir. Middle school and high school is an important time, as it is when students' voices are changing. Although girls experience voice change, it is much more drastic in boys. A lot of literature and music education has been focused on how male voice change works and how to help adolescent male singers. Research done by John Cooksey categorizes male voice change into five stages, and most middle school boys are in the early stages of change. The vocal range of both male and female students may be limited while their voice is changing, and choir teachers must be able to adapt, which can be a challenge to teaching this age range. Nationally, Male students are enrolled in choir at much lower numbers than their female students. The music education field has had a long-time interest in missing males in music programs. Speculation as to why there aren't as many boys in choir, and possible solutions vary widely. One researcher found that boys who enjoy choir in middle school may not always go on to high school choir because it simply doesn't fit into their schedules. Some research speculates that one reason that boys' participation in choir is so low is because the U.S. does not encourage male singers. Often, schools will have a women's choir, which helps the balance issues mixed choirs face by taking on extra female singers. However, without a men's choir also, this could be making the problem worse by not giving boys as many opportunities to sing as girls. Other researchers have noted that having an ensemble or even a workshop dedicated to male singers can help with their confidence and singing abilities. There are various schools of thought regarding how the various sections should be arranged on stage. It is the conductor's decision on where the different voice types are placed. In symphonic choirs, it is common to order the choir behind the orchestra from highest to lowest voices from left to right corresponding to the typical string layout. In a cappella or piano-accompanied situations it is not unusual for the men to be in the back and the women in front, some conductors prefer to place the basses behind the sopranos, arguing that the outer voices need to tune to each other. More experienced choirs may sing with the voices all mixed. Sometimes singers of the same voice are grouped in pairs or three stock proponents of this method argue that it makes it easier for each individual singer to hear and tune to the other parts but it requires more independence from each singer. Opponents argue that this method loses the spatial separation of individual voice lines, an otherwise valuable feature for the audience, and that it eliminates sectional resonance, which lessens the effective volume of the chorus. For music with double choirs, usually the members of each choir are together, sometimes significantly separated, especially in performances of 16th century music. Some composers actually specify that choirs should be separated such as in Benjamin Britten's War Requiem. Some composers use separated choirs to create antiphonal effects, in which one choir seems to answer the other choir in a musical dialogue. Consideration is also given to the spacing of the singers. Studies have found that not only the actual formation, but the amount of space affects the perception of sound by choristers and auditors. The origins of choral music are found in traditional music, as singing in big groups is extremely widely spread in traditional cultures. The oldest unambiguously choral repertory that survives is that of ancient Greece, of which the 2nd century BC Delphic hymns and the 2nd century AD. Hymns of Mesomedes are the most complete. The original Greek chorus sang its part in Greek drama, and fragments of works by Euripides and Sophocles are known from Papyri. The Sanki Lo Sepitaph is a complete song. One of the latest examples, Oxyrhynchus hymn is also of interest as the earliest Christian music. Of the Roman drama's music a single line of Terence surfaced in the 18th c. However, musicologist Thomas J. Matheson comments that it is no longer believed to be authentic. The earliest notated music of Western Europe is Gregorian chant, along with a few other types of chant which were later subsumed by the Catholic Church. This tradition of unison choir singing lasted from some time between the times of St. Ambrose and Gregory the Great up to the present. During the later Middle Ages, a new type of singing involving multiple melodic parts, called organum, became predominant for certain functions, but initially this polyphony was only sung by soloists. Further developments of this technique included clausula, conductus and the motet, which, unlike the Renaissance motet, describes a composition with different texts sung simultaneously in different voices. The first evidence of polyphony with more than one singer per part comes in the Old Hall manuscript, in which there are apparent divisi one part dividing into two simultaneously sounding notes. 
Notes During the Renaissance, sacred choral music was the principal type of formally notated music in Western Europe. Throughout the era, hundreds of masses and motets were composed for a cappella choir, though there is some dispute over the role of instruments during certain periods and in certain areas. Some of the better known composers of this time include Guillaume Dufy, Jos Candé Prez, Giovanni Pierre Luigi de Palestrina, John Dunstable, and William Burt. The glories of Renaissance polyphony were choral, sung by choirs of great skill and distinction all over Europe. Choral music from this period continues to be popular with many choirs throughout the world today. The Madrigal, a part song conceived for amateurs to sing in a chamber setting, originated at this period. Although madrigals were initially dramatic settings off unrequited love poetry or mythological stories in Italy, they were imported into England and merged with the more dance-like balletto, celebrating carefree songs of the seasons, or eating and drinking. To most English speakers, the word madrigal now refers to the latter, rather than to madrigals proper, which refers to a poetic form of lines consisting of seven and eleven syllables each. The interaction of sung voices in Renaissance polyphony influenced Western music for centuries. Composers are routinely trained in the Palestrina style to this day, especially as codified by the 18C music theorist Johann Joseph Fuchs. Composers of the early 20th century also wrote in Renaissance inspired styles. Herbert Howells wrote a Mass in the Dorian mode entirely in strict Renaissance style, and Ralph von Williams's Mass in G minor is an extension of this style. Anton Webern wrote his dissertation on the Choralis Constantinus of Heinrich Isaac and the contrapuntal techniques of his serial music may be inferred be this study. The Baroque period in music is associated with the development around 1600 of the figured bass and the basso continuo system. The use of figured bass was a dramatic change in the way composers thought of musical pieces. Unlike a typical Renaissance piece, which was based around interweaving, independent melody lines, a Baroque composer using figured bass thought of a piece as a chord progression. The figured bass part was performed by the basso continuo group, which at minimum included a chord playing instrument and a bass instrument. Baroque vocal music explored dramatic implications in the realm of solo vocal music, such as the monodies of the Florentine Camerata and the development of early opera. This innovation was in fact an extension of established practice of accompanying choral music at the organ, either from a skeletal reduced score or from a basso seguint, a part on a single staff containing the lowest sounding part. A new genre was the vocal concertato, combining voices and instruments, its origins may be sought in the polychoral music of the Venetian school. Claudio Monteverdi brought it to perfection with his Vespers and his Eighth Book of Madrigals, which call for great virtuosity on the part of singers and instruments alike. His pupil Heinrich Schütz introduced the new style to Germany. Alongside the new music of the Seconda Pratica, contrapuntal motets in the style antico or old style continued to be written well into the 19th century. Choirs at this time were usually quite small and that singers could be classified as suited to church or to chamber singing. Monteverdi, himself a singer, is documented as taking part in performances of his Magnificat with one voice per part. Independent instrumental accompaniment opened up new possibilities for choral music. Verse anthems alternated accompanied solos with choral sections, the best known composers of this genre were Orlando Gibbons and Henry Purcell. Grand's motets separated these sections into separate movements. Oratorio, pioneered by Giacomo Carissimi, extended this concept into concert-length works usually loosely based on biblical stories. The pinnacle of the oratorio is found in George Friedrich Handel's works, notably Messiah and Israel and Egypt. While the modern chorus of hundreds had to await the growth of choral societies in his centennial commemoration concert, we find Handel already using a variety of performing forces, from the soloists of the Chandos anthems to larger groups. Lutheran composers wrote instrumentally accompanied cantatas, often based on chorale tunes. While Dietrich Buxtehude was a significant composer of such works, it was largely up to the next generation to undertake cantata cycles on texts for the entire church year. Georg Philipp Telemann wrote choral cantatas for Frankfurt and Graupner cycles for Darmstadt, but Johann Sebastian Bach made a truly monumental contribution. His obituary mentions five complete cycles of his cantatas, of which three, comprising some 200 works, are known today, in addition to motets. Bach himself rarely used the term cantata. Motet refers to his church music without orchestra accompaniment, but instruments playing kala party with the voices. His works with accompaniment consists of his passions, masses, the Magnificat and the cantatas. 
Rifkin's A point of hot controversy today is the so-called Rifkin hypothesis, which re-examines the famous Antwerf Box 1730 memo to the Leipzig City Council calling for at least 12 singers. In light of Bach's responsibility to provide music to four churches and be able to perform double choir compositions with a substitute for each voice, Joshua Rifkin concludes that Bach's music was normally written with one voice per part in mind. A few sets of original performing parts include Ripiani who reinforce rather than slavishly double the vocal quartet. Composers of the late 18th century became fascinated with the new possibilities of the symphony and other instrumental music, and generally neglected chorale music. Mozart's choral works, though not as numerous as his works for other media, stand out as some of his greatest. Haydn became more interested in choral music near the end of his life following his visits to England in the 1790s, when he heard various Handel oratorios performed by large forces, he wrote a series of mass beginning in 1797 and his two great oratorios The Creation and the Seasons. Beethoven wrote only two masses, both intended for liturgical use, although his Misa Solemnis is probably suitable only for the grandest ceremonies due to its length. Difficulty in large-scale scoring. He also pioneered the use of chorus as part of symphonic texture with his Ninth Symphony and Choral Fantasia. In the 19th century, sacred music escaped from the church and leapt onto the concert stage, with large sacred works unsuitable for church use, such as Berlioz's Te Deum and Requiem, and Brahms's Ein Deutsches Requiem. Rossini's Stabat Mater, Schubert's Masses, and Verdi's Requiem also exploited the grandeur offered by instrumental accompaniment. Oratorios also continued to be written, clearly influenced by Handel's models. Berlioz's Lenfants to Christ and Mendelssohn's Elijah and St. Paul are in the category. Schubert, Mendelssohn, and Brahms also wrote secular cantatas, the best known of which are Brahms's Skik Sazlit and Nenia. A few composers developed a cappella music, especially Bruckner, whose masses and motets startlingly juxtapose Renaissance counterpoint with chromatis harmony. Mendelssohn and Brahms also wrote significant a cappella motets. The amateur chorus began to receive serious consideration as a compositional venue for the part songs of Schubert, Schumann, Mendelssohn, Brahms, and others. These singing clubs were often for women or men separately, and the music was typically in four part and either a cappella or with simple instrumentation. At the same time, the Sicilian movement attempted a restoration of the pure Renaissance style in Catholic churches. As in other genres of music, choral music underwent a period of experimentation and development during the 20th century. While few well known composers focused primarily on choral music, most significant composers of the early century produced some fine examples that obviously entered the repertoire. The early modernist composers, such as Richard Strauss, Sergei Rachmaninoff and Max Reger contributed to the genre. Ralph von Williams's Mass in G minor harks back to the Renaissance style while exhibiting the vibrancy of new harmonic languages. Von Williams also arranged English and Scottish folk songs. Arnold Schoenberg's Friedel Ferdin is a tonal kaleidoscope, whose tonal centers are constantly shifting. Ukrainian composer Mykola Leontovich also explored new ways of harmonizing and arranging Ukrainian folk songs, producing masterpieces such as Duderic and Shtedrik the latter of which featured a four-note ostinato theme and became a popular Christmas carol known as Carol of the Bells after it was translated by Peter J. Wilhowski. The advent of atonality and other non-traditional harmonic systems and techniques in the 20th century also affected choral music. Serial music is represented by choral works by Arnold Schoenberg, including the anthem Dreamal Taus and Jara, while the composer's signature use of Sprix Dim is evident in his setting of Psalm 130 de Profundis. Paul Hindemith's distinctive modal language is represented by both his a cappella mass and his six chansons, while a more contrapuntally dissonant style comes through in his secular requiem, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed. Olivier Messiaen also demonstrates dissonant counterpoint in his Sancri chants, which tell the Tristan and Isolde story. Charles Ives' psalm settings exemplify the composer's incomparably radical harmonic language. Tone clusters and aleatory elements play a prominent role in the choral music of Christoph Penderecki, who wrote the St. Luke Passio, and George Ligeti, who wrote both the Requiem and a separate Luxeterna. Milton Babbitt incorporated integral serialism into works for children's chorus, while Daniel Pinkham wrote for choir and electronic tape. Meredith Monk's Panda Chant and Astronaut Anthem explore overtones in an unconventional text setting. Though difficult and rarely performed by amateurs, pieces that demonstrate such unfamiliar idioms have found their way into the repertories of the finest semi-professional and professional choirs around the world.
involved. More accessible styles of choral music include that by Benjamin Britten, including his War Requiem, Five Flower Songs, and Rejoice in the Lamb. Francis Pooling's motets Pour Le Temps de Noël, Gloria, and Mass in G are often performed. A primitivist approach is exemplified by Karl Orff's widely performed Carmina Burana. In the United States, Aaron Copeland, Samuel Barber, and Randall Thompson wrote signature American pieces. In Eastern Europe, Bela Bartok and Zoltan Kodai wrote a small amount of music for choirs. Frank Martin's Mass for Double Choir combines modality and illusion to medieval and Renaissance forms with a distinctly modern harmonic language and has become the composer's most performed work. The so called holy minimalists are represented by Arvo Peart, whose Johannes Passion and Magnificat have received regular performances, John Taverner and Henrik Goretzky share this label. American minimalism and post minimalism are represented by Steve Reich's The Desert Music, choral excerpts from Philip Glass's Einstein on the Beach and John Adams' The Death of Klinghoffer, and David Lang's Pulitzer Prize winning Little Match Girl Passion. At the turn of the 21st century, Choral music has received a resurgence of interest partly due to a renewed interest in accessible choral idioms. Multicultural influences are found in Osvaldo Gollyhoff's St. Mark Passion, which melds the Bach style passion form with Latin American street music, and Chen Yi's Chinese myths cantata melts atonal idioms with traditional Chinese melodies played on traditional Chinese instruments. Some composers began to earn their reputation based foremost on their choral output including the highly popular John Rutter and Eric Whitaker. The large-scale dramatic works of Carl Jenkins seem to harken back to the theatricality of Orff, and the music of James Macmillan continues the tradition off-boundary pushing choral works from the United Kingdom begun by Britain, Walton, and Leyden. Meanwhile, composers such as John Williams, known primarily for film scores, and prominent concert orchestral composers such as Augusta Reed Thomas, Sophia Gubaidulina, Aaron G. Kernis, and Thomas Ades also contribute vital additions to the choral repertoire. A number of traditions originating outside of classical concert music have enriched the choral repertoire as well as provided new outlets to composers. Databases Professional Organizations Resources Media Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.